For this practical, we'll be going over the basics of creating and manipulating strings in Python. So to begin with, let's just create, let's just define a new string, which we'll call seek. We can do this by just using sing, single quotes, like that. We can also define a string using double quotes, just like that. So these two lines do the exact same thing. Now suppose we want to get a character from a string. We can do this using the bracket notation. So this will give us the character at index 1 in our string. Notice that this gives us C, which is actually the second character in the string. It's important to remember that strings in Python are zero indexed. That means that the first character in the string is index 0, and the second character is index 1, and so on. If we want to get the length of our string, we could just type len, just like that. And as we would expect, our string is four characters long. We can define an empty string by just putting two quotes with nothing in between them. And if we get the length of an empty string, that's length zero, just like we would expect. Now let's, uh, let's concatenate two strings. So I'm going to define two strings. I can concatenate these by just using a plus sign. You can see that Python has added these two strings into a single new string. We can also uh, concatenate strings using the join function. So to do this, I'm going to start by creating a list of strings. If I want to concatenate these strings with nothing in between them, I first put two single quotes for an empty string, and then dot join, and then I put the list. So this will join the list using the separator that's before the period. So in this case, it's an empty string, so we'll concatenate them just like that. If we wanted, wanted to add them with commas in between them, we could put a comma in there, and now it gives us that. Now let's uh, let's try creating a random string of DNA sequences. So in order to, to do this, I'm going to use the random module in Python. So I'm going to do import random. And then I can use random.choice to choose a random character. I'm going to give it a string of characters to choose from. So I'm going to give it the four nucleotides. And if I run that, it gives me a randomly chosen nucleotide from that string. And if you run that again and again, you're going to get different ones. Right? Yeah, it will give me different nucleotides every time. If I want it to give me a predetermined order, um, so it will give me the same behavior every time, I can seed it by doing something like random.seed and then put an integer in there. And now it should give me, every time I run it, it should give me the same behavior. So in this case, it will give me G every time. So now let's use this random.choice to generate a longer string of nucleotides. So to do this, I'm going to first create an empty sequence. And I'm just going to uh, repeatedly add random nucleotides to it. So I'm going to create a loop. And I'm going to loop, uh, I'll go 10 times, so it'll be a string of length 10. And then each, each time I go through the loop, I want to take uh, my string and append onto it a randomly chosen nucleotide. And if I run this, you see I get a string of nucleotides. And every time I run it, it will give me a different random string. Now, in your loop, you used for underscore in range. Can you just say something about what the underscore means? Yeah, so in this case, um, I don't care uh, what index in the iteration I'm at. So I use an underscore to indicate that I don't want to save that number to a variable. If I cared about my in index, I could do something like 4i in range 10. And then i would loop from 0 up to 9. In this case, since I'm not using i, I can just replace it with an underscore. Another way to generate a random sequence is uh, using join. Uh, so uh, I'm going to do it like this. Uh, empty string dot join, which we saw above. And then I'm going give to give it a set, random.choice. Uh, 
for underscore in range. So you probably rep, uh, recognize most of these elements from the, uh, from the block above. In this case, we just combine them into a single line to create a list of randomly chosen nucleotides and then join them into a string. Right, let me just print that out just to verify that it worked. And there's our random string. Uh, so we already talked about uh, getting a specific character from a string. We can also get substrings using a uh, colon. So uh, say I want to get uh, just a range of characters. If I do 1 colon 3, that will give me the range of characters from index 1 up to, but not including, index 3. So this is, uh, this is referring to the string I just generated, and it's giving me the two Ts there. Uh, we can get a prefix by just not putting a number before the first colon. Uh, so if I just do colon three, this will give me everything from the beginning of the string up to but not including index three. So it gives me GTT. So that would be the same as if you would put zero colon three inside the square. Right, bracket. so if I, do, if I do zero colon three, it gives me the exact same thing. And similarly, we can get a suffix um, by just not putting a character after the seven. And that gives us CAG, which is at the end. And this would be identical to if we put from 7 up to the length of the sequence. Mm -hmm. Another way we can get a suffix is actually using negative indices. So if we put a negative index in brackets, it will give us, it will count backwards from the end of the string to get that. So for our sequence above, if I do uh, sequence negative 3, it gives me C, which you'll, you'll notice is the third character from the end of that string. And similarly, I can do sequence from negative 3, colon, and then not, uh, just leave the endpoint blank, and that will give me the last three characters of the string. So that's the suffix of length 3 of the string we created. Mm 